Saints quarterback Drew Brees and his wife Brittany are donating $5 million so that 10,000 meals can be served per day throughout Louisiana. The Second Harvest Food Bank, Oshner Health Systems, Walk-Ons, Jimmy John, Small Sliders, and Waiter will join together to deliver the food. Brees said on an Instagram post, let's all do our part, maintain hope to get through this together. Yeah, uh, just an incredible job by Drew Brees here and a lot of the leading sports luminaries of the city with was Gail uh, Benson giving $1 million, Zion pledging to cover the fees of arena workers, and now Drew Brees in the top rope, $5 million specifically teaming up to uh, provide meals to people who, who are in need of them in these trying times. LSU Athletics Director Scott Woodward told The Advocate it's way too premature to speculate whether the coronavirus pandemic will wipe out the upcoming college football season. Sunbelt Conference Commissioner Keith Gill was asked the same question and said, he doesn't want to speculate either, but the options are being discussed, including games with no fans. NFL Commissioner Roger Goodell has sent out a memo to teams that the draft will take place April 23rd through the 25th. Saints general manager Mickey Loomis is in favor of delaying the draft so scouts and personnel people can perform the work they normally do, but can't because of the travel restrictions. Peter King had Mickey Loomis on his podcast earlier this week. We'll talk to King about the draft date, staying on its April 23rd through 25th coming up here at 8 o'clock this morning. Michael Brockers, longtime uh, Los Angeles Ram, former LSU Tigers standout, was agreed to terms with the Baltimore Ravens earlier this week, but The Athletic is reporting, uh, reporting that the Ravens will not be completing their deal with the defensive tackle Brockers. There were concerns about the condition of his ankle going into free agency when they were finally able to view the results of a physical. Such physicals are more complicated this part of the year since players can't meet with team doctors because of rules implemented to the spread of the coronavirus but it looks like Brockers did not pass that physical due to an independent doctor seeing that ankle he had initially agreed to a three-year 30 uh, 30 million dollar deal I mean what is like I don't feel like we hear about NFL players not passing their physicals that much like what how bad does that ankle have to be off or what information got presented to make them back out of a deal with Brockers, who graded very well last year as a top 20 D tackle in the entire league. Former first round pick, had a ton of success, played in a Super Bowl. Um, and, and as we talked about yesterday, when we were running down divisions, like we thought that was one of the best parts about the Ravens was bringing in him and Kalias Campbell. But I guess uh, I guess we'll see where Brockers ends up going now. What does this do to his price? Hey, New Orleans, Mickey Loomis, I know you have no cap room, but you always have cap room. Maybe you look at bringing Brockers in. He didn't, you mentioned that you don't see this a lot in the NFL, yeah. but this is actually the second time in two days. I've never heard stories like this, so you yeah, don't hear too. a lot What's of stories, but the Jaguars had a deal with Dark Reese Den, uh, Denard, yeah. cornerback, fell through yesterday. That's that former Michigan cornerback, yeah. I think? Yeah. Due to a failed, uh, failed physical. Huh. Uh, Major League Baseball with the coronavirus at least delaying the MLB season or the start of the season. Uh, the Major League Baseball Players Association reached an agreement with MLB on several key issues Thursday night including service time, player salaries, roster moves, the draft, and upcoming international signing periods are all going to be addressed in this deal, which the owners will vote on today. If it's, ratify, if it's uh, ratified, a roster freeze will go into effect for an um, indeterminate period of time. <laughs> Jeez. I don't know you what you're talking it. about. You did it. I found out. You did it. I, 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 I was, I was I going like to tell, tell you guys to read through this. Some of it's very interesting. I feel like you're skimming through some of it, and it actually is interesting. Uh, but, uh, yeah, so basically. Well, hey, we need something to talk about at 715, so there you go. We can get into I, the nitty-gritty detail. I think the most interesting part of this is the draft, and I'm, I'm just curious how, like, because they're only going to have um, – Probably five rounds yeah, now. Five so how rounds. does that affect college but, athletes? Th th that's the funny part about the baseball draft to begin with, though. It's so yeah. hard to know anything about it because they have like seventy rounds. Well, not anymore. Yeah, now there's just five. So yeah. like, are a lot of players coming back? Like, how's that? How's it affect everyone? No clue. NBA no clue. in the midst of a shutdown for the coronavirus pandemic, the NBA is reducing base salaries by twenty percent for about a hundred of the league office's top earning executives around the world. ESPN's reporting many of the executives and officials who were impacted by the work in the league's New York headquarters, including Commissioner Adam Silver and Deputy Commissioner Mark Tatum. These reductions will be implemented immediately and are expected to continue through the course of the coronavirus crisis. That's a good PR move. Um, in a time where the lowest members of these organizations are being fired and, and are furloughed or, or and having to move on, and I'm not you know criticizing businesses for that either. I get it. It's economics. Like, if you're not bringing in money, you can't keep people hired, but... 
Yeah, now's not the time for executive like CEO salaries to go up. So solid move there, I think, from a PR perspective by the NBA. NBA has set the pace this entire way for sports and the coronavirus, whether it was suspending their season indefinitely, cutting the salaries of some of the executives. They have been on the forefront, and I think this is another great example on why Adam Silver is widely respected and thought of as the best commissioner in sports because – He's not scared to make a to make a decision. Yeah, I mean, that's the toughest part of of these roles is that somebody you have to have somebody that's just make a choice. Well, I mean, make even, a decision either way. Even look at something fun like the All Star Game, where yeah, like uh, even it, even though the All Star Games means nothing, not many people would have like you're saying, Jordy had the balls to do something like the Elam scoring uh, fa- final, where they had the different set up this year and how it worked and how you won quarters or whatever and it led to the most exciting all-star game in years because they 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 wanted to try new things so yeah adam silver has been a progressive owner and and the nba and their brand they have very much uh kind of set up camp and being we are going to be at the forefront of being socially conscious and that's that's what they followed through on for whether you agree or not